Welcome to Imagine Wealth Without Risk, the podcast that guides you to fulfilling your dreams through guaranteed, secure investing. Here's your host, Ted Thomas. Hi, everyone. This is Ted Thomas, and welcome aboard. As This podcast is called Imagine Wealth Without Risk. Really glad to have you all here today, and I have a guest that's going to give us quite an education. We're going to get a nice background. Now, as you all remember, I'm the expert on tax lien certificates and tax deeds, but I like to bring other experts and people I know to the table, and they're going to tell us about what they do and how they've been successful in business. So it's not a matter of just learning how to be a tax lien certificate or a tax deed investor. You're going to have other things to do in your life. And so that's the reason I bring these other experts in. So today, Deborah's with me today. And Deborah, where are you located? I'm up in the central part of Massachusetts. We're about 45 minutes west of Boston. Okay, west of Boston. Okay, so that's, let's see, I grew up just outside of Boston. So you're in a place called Worcester or someplace like that. That's Worcester. correct. And you said, said it correctly. So anyway, I'm an old Bostonian and close to there. And so we, we have a commonality right away. Deborah, tell us a little bit about yourself and what you do and just whatever. Sure. Ted, I grew up in the Midwest and did most of my medical education out there. And then I came out to Massachusetts to train in plastic surgery and did some specialty training on top of that. So I spent from the time I was in college until the time I went into practice was about a total of 17 years, if you can believe that. So I spent a lot of time learning medicine, learning surgery, practicing it, learning my craft, not just intellectually, but also learning to use my hands properly and developing judgment. And then I went into my own practice. I spent a year at the university as an assistant professor. And then I'm still an assistant professor there, but, but I don't, I'm no longer on their staff. And I went into private practice. And the reason I did that was because I really liked being in control of my own business. And I'm a kind of an efficiency, don't waste time kind of person. And that's not really a great fit in academics. Sometimes there's, uh, it's a big it's a big machine and it's hard to turn. It's hard to turn an icebreaker, I guess I would say. Maybe we say the word frustrating. Yeah, so it can be for a person like me who's very efficiency oriented. So I really love running my own show. And so I had to learn business as we discussed a little earlier. I had to learn how to run a business. And I really found, I found out I really love business. I really love to run a business. I wasn't really exposed to it growing up. So I might've ended up in it, in a, I don't know. I. Plastic surgery is really a good, a good spot for me because I like beauty and I'm very artistic, I like talking to people, and I love using my hands. So for a long time now, it's been really good to me. It's a challenging lifestyle sometimes, but it's been good. And through that time, I was always intrigued with how do you build wealth. And so I had really three educations. I had my education in surgery and medicine, and then I had my self-education along with mentors and advisors in business. Uh And then I spent a lot of time teaching myself wealth building. That's what I've been up to. It's been busy. I always said I was high energy, so it kept me out of trouble. You you certainly kept out of trouble. I'd love to talk to you about the wealth building. And I know you're building, not only launching a podcast and so on, but you're building this part of your business as being something stronger than it has been in the past. I, I, I assume if you work as a surgeon, you do quite well at that. But then the challenge is... Now you have to go into a whole new field of developing a new and a wealth building process. Can you talk to us about that? Sure. So the way I'm going about this is through a media company called Deluge Bow. It's D-E-L-U-G-E-B-E-A-U. And the Deluge being a wealth of information coming your way. Beautiful information. And I happen to think money's beautiful. And I happen to think that women are loved by money. So maybe everyone is, but for sure, I believe that women, money loves women. So my podcast uh, is called Deluge Bow. We're also going to have our magazine online. And it's really about inspiration for the aspirational women. So we're looking for women who aspire for more success, more contribution to the world, creating more value in increasing sorts of ways that helps them to grow as people and helps them to grow as professionals and leaders. Uh, So that's the kind of woman we we care to address. And we're looking at this from the point of view of the central pillar of wealth building being uh, everything from deciding that you want to uh, build wealth, whatever that means to you. And there's more than one kind of, of wealth, obviously. Health is part of your wealth, for example. How to, what the mechanism is, what the, not the strategy, but what the mechanism is of doing that. Obviously, one strategy would be tax liens. 
I think it's a fabulous strategy, by the way. We're going to feature that on our podcast and our magazine. Let me so, interrupt you for just a yeah. second. Does Deluge Bow have a, a website today or yes, a place they yes. can contact you? Do you want to yes. give that website again? Because yes. we, we don't want to get into too much depth without telling people how they could, because the podcast sure. will end after 30 minutes or so or 45 minutes, and we want to make sure that the people can contact you. Sure. They can find me at Deluge Bow, D-E-L-U-G-E-B-E-A-U, DelugeBow.com. And if they put that in, they can find our information and our archives and so forth. And I spent a lot of time and missteps trying to figure out how you build wealth. And I think that for the busy, aspirational woman, it's nice to shortcut through that and wow. find some actionable information Good. that Good. you can use right up front. And you don't have to sort through the noise and the, all the stuff that's out there, especially now. Yeah. to find out what you need to know. So that's our intention is to give shortcuts for women to learn to build wealth, how to present themselves in ways that support the success, both in terms of what their internal being is like, what their intention is, what their physical presence says to other people. As we were talking earlier about body language, for example, and then how to make your life work so you can work. And it's, I think, a special challenge for women to make the rest of their life work so that they can actually focus on being successful. And that's not something we've had a lot of role models for. So yeah. we're going to be giving my views on that in our, in our podcasts and in our, on our magazine. But we'll also be gleaning that from a lot of other successful women. And I think we can all learn together. Sounds to me like you're doing a lot of things here. So we've got this website already, and you're going to have a magazine, and you're going to have a podcast. You're going to be a busy person. <laughs> yeah, we're not going to do a glossy magazine at this point, at least, but we are going to. It's going to be in, in a sort of, some people call it show notes format, website show notes. Oh, but that's really going to be our online magazine that will we'll invite people on a regular basis in their, in their inboxes to come to our website or our magazine on, online and find that information and hopefully follow us on our podcast. So give me some broad-based things. Now, you know me, I'm in the tax lien indeed. So I'm narrow cast. I'm a narrow caster, but I think what you are is you're more of a, you're more broad-based so that women can do a lot of different things. So do you want to give me some examples of some of the things that you've done and how you, a little bit about your journey to get there to, uh, because if you, sure. if you, wealth building has a lot to cover. I can't get it all done today, but we certainly get a lot of, from sure. this interview. So I think the, the very basic, most basic decision is deciding that you want to grow wealth. And it seems like a funny place to start, but in fact, you have to grab onto that and make a commitment to it. And once you've figured that out, that, you know what, this is for me, then you need to go to the next step and take responsibility for your money. And I think there's lots and lots of people that don't take responsibility for their money. So that's everything from knowing where you're starting, knowing how much you have, knowing what order you need to put money aside for, and actually figuring out how to keep more of your money and not have your money go in and then go out. So taking responsibility for your money from education point of view and from practice point of view. So value-based spending, learning about taxes and how to not give the government more of your money than you need to. And then the next step, I think, is to create either a business or have a high paid job that pays you well enough that you can have excess cash flow. And once you've figured out how to do the excess cash flow and keep growing that, then to taking the next step and getting the education you need and the experience you need to use your money to grow, uh, grow and work for you. So as some people say, put overalls on your money. Ted, oh, yeah. what you do is so fascinating to me because it fits those last two categories, right? So cash flow, it makes right. for cash flow and you don't want to take so much risk so you lose your money. You can't lose your money or right. you can't accomplish what you're looking to do. And then once you have a secure fund of your wealth fund, then how do you grow that? So that's in the investing sphere, which also works for tax liens and tax deeds. So okay. that's where we're at. Okay. All right. Now tell me uh, uh, more about your website. Just give me a starting point and some suggestions. Uh, how are you going to guide uh, a person to building this wealth? We're going to do the show notes from our podcast, but the solo cast will be me, just myself, not doing an interview with anyone, where I discuss these, uh, just flesh out what we've talked about today. So what are the pillars of wealth building? How do you go about it in a, in a, in a stepwise process? I'm the kind of person who has to have a, a sort of an organized approach to things. I'm, uh, I talk about 
the jigsaw puzzle. You have to find the corners and then you put in all the flat edges, right? And then you fill the picture in. And I'm not really good at doing a little splash here and a little splash there. So I'm assuming that lots of other people also think the same way I do. And then the other things that we're going to bring in terms of teaching people are creating context around wealth. So if you can't imagine yourself in a situation where you have wealth uh, and what that might be like, and give yourself permission to be in that space and feel deserving, but you can't really get there. And there's actually scientific studies and anecdotal information that shows that. And then how do you present yourself such that as you ascend the levels of wealth and you're interacting with peers and people that are at a higher level of expertise than you are, how do you present yourself in such a way so that you can be included in that group and you're comfortable there so that you're not feeling like you're overreaching and so you behave in a way and you have the principles and values that you share with the people who have achieved that level. Because people don't just fall into that, they build that. And they want to associate with other people who are capable of building that to and enrich their lives and that they can give to and also receive from. So how do you present yourself? And I think that personal development is underrated in business and just in ability to have opportunity. And I think that's a huge piece of wealth building, in my opinion, that's, that people don't talk about. And women especially need support for. When you mention these things to me, it comes to mind, I just did an interview with uh, one of our mutual friends, Stephen's clients yesterday. And uh, a gentleman said to her, uh, because she had now separated from her husband, I don't think you'll be able to uh, do this now that you don't have a husband to, to get financial information from. And uh, this woman is very successful. And she's uh, not only a certified financial planner, but she has other degrees also. And she's an expert at many other things. And of course, that was a kind of a push down. And you're a woman that's been successful already in one field that was primarily dominated by men in the past. And now how, how are women, are you going to be able to help them get through? There, there's a barrier here, not that the woman caused, but the men caused. So how do you keep them from losing their ego and not shooting them down? How do you go about that? Are you, going are you to be able talking to about the men not losing their ego or the women not losing their ego? I, I don't I think that the men, we should push aside and say, how are we going to take care of the women? The, the financial future is going to be the women. It's not going to be the men. The men keep hitting this uh, barrier that they're only going to go so far. And this woman, she was put down because she was now advancing past her husband. And the person on the other side of the table didn't even recognize that. And how are we going to get it so the women can talk to these men and, and get them to understand yes, that this yes. thing is changing? Yes, yeah. yes, absolutely. And, and you know what, it's so important what you're talking about, isn't it? So well, one of the add, things- Let me add something before I ask that question. 63 to 65% of my clients are women. Yes, yes. The percentage is women. And people ask me why. Okay, I'm just going to, this is a joke now. Okay, they ask me why. I said, because they'll read the book. <laughs> and they'll take direction and they're coachable. Exactly, that's yeah. it. I find the same thing. So I am focusing on women. Why? Because I don't think that men will listen to me, honestly. <laughs> there you go. Okay. I may be wrong. I want you to, I want you to just, just take it off the top of your head because yes. you see, you live through that. See, yes. I don't know how to tell a woman that. I don't, but you yes. do. Think of the value you're bringing now to the table because if you're going to help a woman get through that, not destroy the man's ego on the way, but the women are going to control the money, so why shouldn't yeah. they do that? I don't have any trouble yes. with that. My, my premise is that the reason we need to get more women in, into more money and more influence and more power is because I think it'll balance the world, honestly. I don't know that women are uh, – it's not my premise that women are going to run the world, although it's perfectly possible for them in some kiss instances. But I think we need to stand shoulder to shoulder. And one of the things women need to do, and I, in fact, think it's their, a woman's responsibility is learn to understand men because men and women are not wired the same. So part of what I did in my medical training was study psychiatry. So I'm really? a surgeon, but I also study psychiatry. And I've always been fascinated by how the human mind works. I'm fascinated by human behavior and particularly interaction between the sexes. Men are wired differently than women. And to learn and understand how men think is of paramount importance for a woman to be successful. We're all going to be standing shoulder to shoulder. When we don't only have the opportunity to work only with women or only with men. So we need to be able to interact in ways that are positive. And I think it's very important for a woman to learn to create the boundaries that she needs in interacting with a man, but to protect him and be respectful, uh, recognizing that he may not understand. There's not great paradigms yet 
for how do men and women interact. And there's certainly information out there now. Um, there's a book that I've just ordered called Athena Rising that talks about how men should successfully mentor women. And I'm going to read that book because I want to be able to teach women how to manage up. So if they are being mentored, they need to know how to help their mentor them. And I'm a firm believer of that in business and everything else. You need to be able to manage up. So if someone comes in, for example, I have a friend who's a vice president at an insurance company, and she had a group come in. I can't remember exactly what the situation was. It might have been that I can't remember for sure, but one of the gentlemen who came in asked her to get him a cup of coffee. Whoa. He's the vice president. So uh, she said to him, that's not my role here, but we will make sure that you get a cup of coffee. Now, what a great respectful way to manage that and to manage up and to educate him in a way that was not disrespectful. Yeah. Uh, so now he knows that maybe that's not appropriate to ask, but he yeah. probably didn't realize that. We can't fault him for that. We don't have a lot of paradigms around that. So she was creating a paradigm for him that I'm, in fact, a vice president. And just because I'm a woman, I would not necessarily be waiting on you. But we certainly can find someone who can carry out that task for you. But it's not my role. And I was very impressed by the way she handled that. She didn't get upset about it. She didn't get hostile with him or think he was a jerk. She just educated him in a way that was respectful. And I think all of us need to do that. We, but especially women who want to be mentored, need to learn how to talk to men. Now, uh, in, in that way, I, I went through a medical education. I can tell you that most of that time is spent in academics, in academic medicine. And the development of both men and women in that situation and people who stay in academics is just like people who go to college and become college professors. They don't have as much interface with the world. So they don't always, I guess that's what they call the ivory tower. So they don't always know know how to interact. They don't always know what's appropriate and not appropriate. And if you have good boundaries as a woman, you're going to give off those vibes that this certain thing is not appropriate. So unlike some of my colleagues, I never had any sexual harassment. And I think part of that was because they knew that if they crossed a certain line, there'd be blood on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's pretty, that was pretty brutal. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, truly brutal. Yeah. And so there, that never happened to me, but I certainly had colleagues who that happened to. And I think when women think this through ahead of time, they uh, learn to create better boundaries. So for example, if someone had invited me to go to their hotel room to interact with them on a professional basis, I would have never done that. I would have insisted that something like that happen in a public place. Of so course. there's pre-thought and boundaries work for that. But sexual harassment aside, let's face it, there's a certain number of sociopaths that are in high levels. It just happens that way. That inner woman is what I'm thinking of yeah. uh, when, I, when I bring this up because they, uh, um, if your dad was dominant and your dad was dominant and then the teacher's dominant and whatever, sooner or later, uh, you might not have the, the inner strength. To, to, it doesn't mean intellectually sure. you're not above sure. that person. Emotional. And, yeah, it's emotional an emotional strength. thing that's holding you. It, it does take a lot of belief in yourself. I think that's part of empowerment and what we talk about with empowering women and empowered women empower other women. I think that's part of it. And yeah. so just getting this together and developing some communities, I think, around this yeah. will be very helpful. And then I like to teach women a man is not a plan. So if you don't be a lazy bones. I'm trying, and to, think of, I'm trying to think of the gal that invented that. What was her name? Yeah. Was that Mary Kay? Was that Mary Kay? It could have been. But, I think uh, it was years ago. She's a man yeah. without a plan. Have your own plan. Don't, yeah. don't have a man as a plan. That's childish. That yeah. You don't want to be dependent. Yeah. And the bigger complaint I have from women now is they know who they are. They're powerful within their being. And they have a hard time finding a partner. And what I tell them is wait until you find a man with a big enough boat that you can be part of that. And if you don't find him, you're fine on your own. You do not need a man to be self-realized. You know, that, and lots of women do that. But unfortunately, yeah, they get to be 55 before they get to do that for a lot of them. Because yeah. I meet so many of them that it would be nice if they get started at 35 when they start making some money and put it to work. So let's go back to your, your website because this is such a, this is a, such a new thing and you're, you've created this. And what's your intention? Where are you taking this whole thing? Uh, I think we're going to trust the process. We're going to have intention, but not have too much specifics around our strategy. 
so that we can go with ever-changing times. And our, our main strategy is to help women uh, get opportunity and not have to sort through too many things for wealth education and opportunity. And we want the things that we put on the website not to just entertain. I hope some of it's entertaining. I certainly hope this is entertaining, but uh, mostly to put something out there for action so women can choose it and yeah. make progress quickly. So that's our intention with this. Not, we're not interested in just creating some fluff. Here's the latest this, that, or the other thing. We want women to be able to grab onto stuff and say, this fits for me. Now, one of the things we're going to do is before the wealth building even begins is to offer life design because you can apply engineering principles for prototyping to your life. So you're not 17 years into a medical practice and, or medical training and find out you don't like medicine. Let's talk about you know, that. Yeah. So life design is something that a couple of professors from Stanford came up with because they had been exposed to the engineering principles of prototyping. So the very first time you invent something, it's probably not going to be the perfect design. Same thing with your life. And I think maybe part of this whole thing where we ask kids what they want to be when they grow up, we're looking for ideas <laughs> as adults. Yeah. So anyway, I think that an intentional approach to life design so that you can learn to prototype and then go through some specific exercises the way an engineer would develop a product, you design your life, is the thing to start with before you figure out what's your cash machine going to be that makes your money. What are your interests in investing? First of all, find out what of the possibilities exist for you and then choose one. And once you choose one, don't look back because there's more than one. There's more than one way you could be absolutely happy, very fulfilled, and do great work. There's more than one. But find the one you want and then don't agonize. Run with it and love it. And so life design followed by all the other things you have to do to be successful and build, build a happy and delightful life that hopefully has a good amount of money in it. And then where you're creating value for other people so you can feel that you made a difference when you were on this earth. You've got a lot of different categories here. This is amazing. We started out one one area and here we are, life design. This is amazing. Just think of people actually going to college and doing what they finished college and actually doing it. Most people, they finish the university and they're doing something altogether different immediately. Yes, yes. Or, or they do, as you say, go through 18 years of medical training and they might not like that. Oh my goodness. And they yes. end up as an administrator in the hospital rather yes. than be the, the person that's uh, doing the surgery or whatever because it's... People change over that whole period of time. They and sure so, do. Uh, yeah, and, so, and some people make a midlife pivot and other people have an encore career at the end of their, end of their exactly. first career. That's what I'm doing here with wealth building. I just took me a long time to get that together, but it's great. But there's not just one thing. And I think once you find something, the biggest challenge is once you've designed your life is running with it and not going, oh my God, but what about if I'd done this or what about if I've done that? So that's, that's what we're doing. And you talk about, I've got a lot of things going here. Creating a successful life is a tapestry. Exactly. And thank, good, thank goodness we have people who go deep on subjects. I find that my talent is, my greatest talent is in uh, connecting the uh, complexities of systems and seeing how they interact with each other. And that's my greatest talent. So I'm a curator. I'm not an inventor of a particular thing. I'm a curator. Let's take this, let's take that. And we know that if we sew that tapestry together, we can create a successful life. And you can have happiness, you can have success, you can have a great relationship and a, a life that makes you completely fulfilled. So that's what I'm interested in making for people or helping people. It's a big, it's a big challenge. It's a big job but it's a curation. It's like having a beautiful museum. There's lots of different paintings that come in. Yes, wonderful. Gee, that's a nice description. Let's go back and let's talk a little bit more about Deluge Bureau and talk about the website and some of the things people could discover there and give us a little direction as we run out of time. Let's give us a, a little direction on what we should, male and female, should be thinking about in this sure. next sure. six months to a year. Get, get us started and give us a little but fast start or something here. Sure. So we're looking at, first of all, the basic thing is just getting a subscription so you have access to what we have to offer. And okay. then there'll be basic education. There'll be advanced education, especially in the arenas of how do you get cash flow in your life? Very Once good. you have cash flow, how do you protect your, what are the different elements to protect yourself so you hold on to your cash? And then how do you invest it? So we're going to have all those opportunities. And then the other pieces that we'll have 
for example, life design. I think we will be having events. We don't have those set up yet, but life design, depending upon how interested people are in that, I think it's so basic and so needed that we want to put that together for events so people aren't too far down the path and have to backtrack because that wastes time and it wastes money. And then very actionable strategies and tactics in terms of how you make your life work as a woman so you can work, maybe some men as well. Some of them are common to everybody. And then how do you do personal development? And that is the most challenging because it's the scariest to people. When you actually look at yourself and say, am I the best person I could be? Or do I need to keep working in that sphere? And if I need to keep working in that sphere, where do I find that information? And how do I make that happen? And what experiences do I need to have? We'll have access to resources for all of those things and ongoing teaching. And then the experts that come out of our podcasts and the opportunities, especially for creating cash flow, Because I think those are hard to find. It, it takes uh, to find people of integrity that are off Offering you uh, an opportunity to learn. This is not a master's degree that you have to get to learn these things. Persons can take your course, Ted. They don't need to have done anything particular in their life before that to be successful right. with that, except right. to have some money to get started. I look at so many things that people do in their life, getting a master's degree, getting a PhD, that is a huge investment of time, effort, and money. Right. Here we can, people can go, maybe they don't have that time. Maybe they don't have that money to go get a degree. And then who, who knows, like you said, 27% of people, fun fact, 27% of people end up working in the area that they train in college. Everybody else does something else. Exactly. Have you really spent your, your money as well as you could have? So we're going to have these opportunities. And I think that is actually the very best value of what's on the website. Your enthusiasm is, is oozing out of your pores. <laughs> it's, it's amazing. It's a, you, have a, you have a joie de vivre, you know what they say. It yeah. really is. Exciting. So that's good. So they can start with a newsletter or something like that right away, or where can they start right away? We haven't developed a newsletter yet, but they can go right to the website and okay, start right accessing that information. Go yes. Give that address again. So it's got... It's delugebo.com. D E L U G E C O M. Okay. Sorry, delugebo, B E A U dot C O M com. Okay. So delugebo.com. All right. And what can they get right away? Is there something they can download and read or what, what should they expect there? Sure. You can get our show notes from our podcast immediately. They'll have great nuggets in them. Okay. And the next thing we're planning on doing actually is developing some groups that may be, that they may be able to join a group by then. For example, oh. tech entrepreneurs, women tech entrepreneurs will uh, likely have a group there. We may oh. also have a group for executives looking for money for their new businesses or that want to connect with venture capitalists. And we may also have a group for executives, women executives who want to be able to figure out the process that, to take them to their next job. So these are just some starting ideas. And as we get moderators for those groups, women that are passionate about that and want to help other women, will be putting those in place. So they can go and explore there. And Could they consult with you on some of these items if it was more personal that they wanted or anything like uh, that? Do you plan on doing any of that? We, we don't have a, a coaching system set up yet. Uh-huh. And because I am still running my practice as well as doing this, we, but a coaching system and a mastermind system is in the works in the future. Oh, nice. Yeah. Okay. That's going to so be awesome. By the time this gets heard, that may be present. Oh, wow. So you're really working at this uh, so many hours every day then. Yes, indeed. Oh boy. Well, you're enthusiastic. You, you just need exposure and you're going to be uh, successful. That's all you well, need. At this we're, we're unstoppable, I think is what I, I like want to call it. <laughs> yes. I used to have a guy by the name of Marshall Silver that I knew. I still know him, of course. Uh, and that's what he, unstoppable. And then have someone put fire in their mouth. I said, oh my goodness, I don't want to put fire in my mouth. And then they would close their mouth and of course the fire would go out. So the people would, how, they, they, they didn't believe it when they saw themselves on film putting fire in their mouth. And he always said, you're unstoppable. And they would jump up anyway. So, you get, so that was entertaining. You're the real deal. So uh, yeah, was, oh, that's a great image. More than entertaining. If I can find the image, I'll send it to you because it's it's amazing. To see. Love it. Thank so, you. Someone take the thing out of their mouth and say, I'm unstoppable. And I'm not sure they believed it themselves because their knees were probably banging together. You know? <laughs> you know that is. Don't ask you to eat fire. I'm not eating any fire. Right. No way. Right. You're not getting me on that stage. But anyway, so. So uh, what would you like to conclude with? What's some sage advice you'd like to pass on to my listeners? My people are, are, I'm a very narrow cast guy, not because I want to be, but because I had to be, because there was so much to learn in the investment world. 
And my first career as a pilot, so it goes right along with your life planning you talked about. And I loved flying. I didn't want to do anything but be a pilot. And then for, after umpteen years of looking at cumulus clouds across the water and so on, I said, gee, there must be more to life than looking at cumulus clouds. And that was after flying all over the world. So it was a wonderful career, but I was ready for something else. And I think that's what's happening. And I know it's happening to my clients. This is very apropos for our client because it, it's so appropriate for them because I deal with people in an environment that's 45 to 105. Yes. Okay. And these people have finally got enough money to almost say, I can do what I want to do. But it took them 25 years of their life to get there. So they're walking on ice. They want to be careful. Yes. So give us some advice so that we can close up our conversation for today, which I'm certainly sure won't be our last one. Because you have so many things I need to now narrowcast. So I narrowcast my people to just think about tax liens and tax deeds because of the safety. But my podcast isn't about just that one thing because we they need to get different viewpoints from different people like yourself. So sure. what would you like to close with? I think what I'd like to say is, particularly to the women out there, uh -huh. is be persistent. Don't give up. Believe in yourself. Surround yourself with positive people who believe in you also. Oh, and nice. If you fall down, pick yourself up and just consider that a learning experience. Not a failure, but a learning experience and don't ever give up. Nice. Now, have you written any books or do you have any uh, special reports that you've written or anything like that you'd like to tell people about? We're in the process. I haven't decided yet whether I'm going to be writing a book just on wealth building for women or if what I really want to write about is how to live an extraordinary life. And this podcast is a fulfillment for me on uh, living an extraordinary life, this education for women, because I have committed myself to living an extraordinary life. And part of that is my commitment to being an extraordinary resource to others. I'm, I may write a book on how to live the extraordinary life just because put, I think- Put that on your lead head. Yes. Extraordinary life for others. Extraordinary okay. life for others, yes. Oh, that's really nice. That's very good. Listen, I want to thank you. This has been a tremendous uh, education for me, so I've really enjoyed it. And so I'm going to look forward to getting together with you on another one of these podcasts in the future. As this develops, let's communicate, and I'll try to give you as much uh, as I can in my podcast so other people know that you're there. And they want to go to what website? Delugebow.com. And thank you. That. Thank you so very much, Ted. And I have to tell you, I really appreciate and I want to thank you for all the women you support. Thank you. Thank you. I have to say it the other way around. I'm grateful to all the women because they support me. So it's really <laughs> the other way around. Believe me, I'm grateful Fabulous. to all those women because Fabulous. I would never have them as clients. They sit there and hit their husband on the head at the seminars and say, we got to do this. We got to do that, which really means they're going to do that. <laughs> if she says yes, then they're going to do it. It's a transition that we're living through. And uh, right. the young people don't even know what we're talking about. They're so much more equal at uh, 20 years old than we ever dreamed about. It's just, yes. uh, it's just a whole different world. You're offering a great opportunity and, and it gives me a lot of pleasure to offer it to my listeners, honestly. So thank you. Hi, this is Linda. Don't forget, you can listen to more episodes at tedthomaspodcast.com. You can also listen to Imagine Wealth Without Risk on iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play, and Spotify. 